This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and it's Friday, and that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. One thing I've looked at a lot in this series is creature types. At this point, I've done more than 50 of them, and today we're doing another one with a look at frogs. I was inspired to do this list by the powerful new frog printed in Innistrad Crimson Vow, Grolnok the Omnivore. And it isn't just a powerful frog, it's also a frog payoff, the first tribal frog payoff in the game, because it mills you every time you attack with one, further fueling Grolnok. This got me to wondering how frogs have done throughout all of Magic's history, and that's how I ended up here. To be eligible for this list, a card had to have the word frog in the text box or on the type line. In all, 41 cards qualified for this video, and in it, we'll talk about the 10 frogs that have left the biggest impact on competitive Magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A top 8 at a first tier event is worth 2 points, and a top 8 at a second tier event is worth 1 point. Alright, let's get to the list. At number 10, it is the Gitrog Monster. The monster is a super powerful frog that we got on our last visit to Innistrad. He packs impressive stats as a 5 mana 6-6 six, six, and lets you play an additional land each turn. In addition to that, he comes with what ends up being mostly upside since he makes you sacrifice a land every upkeep, but you get to draw a card anytime one or more lands go to the graveyard, and obviously that includes from that effect, or from any other effect too, which means that he could team up pretty impressively with Grawlnock. Despite all of that power, the monster has been hard to effectively build around in constructed formats. He only has a single Grand Prix Top 8 that came in a Sultai Control deck at Grand Prix Pittsburgh back in 2016. He isn't likely to be on this list for very long. The monster is a super powerful and fun commander though, so don't feel too bad for him. At number 9, it is Polymorphist's Jest. While there are a decent number of creatures with the frog type in Magic, there are also several cards that turn a creature or creatures into play into frogs, and Polymorphist's Jest is one of those. It transforms every creature on the board into a 1-1 frog with no abilities, which is a great way to deal with problematic creatures temporarily. It was featured in the sideboard of Devotion to Blue decks while it was in Standard. At number 8, it is Anurid Scavenger. It just says Beast on the original card, but all the Anurids in Odyssey block have been eroded to be frog beasts, including this one. The Scavenger is an efficient creature, especially for the early 2000s. It's a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with protection from black. And that was so good at the time that he had to come with a bit of a downside. You have to put a card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library every upkeep or sacrifice it. This can also be upside if you need some of those cards back in your deck. It gained its only Pro Tour Top 8 in an Odyssey Block Blue-Green Madness deck, a deck that could easily discard cards and load up the graveyard, so keeping the Scavenger around wasn't a huge deal. At number 7, it's a split card, Incubation and Incongruity. It makes this list by virtue of the Incongruity half, which lets you exile a creature and replace it with a 3-3 Frog Lizard creature token. Split cards are nice because they're flexible, and when that mode doesn't interest you, you can use Incubation for some pretty nice card selection. It saw play in standard adventure decks, where the card selection Incubation could offer you was extra powerful, since creatures with adventures also came with a spell attached to them. It was nice that in a pinch, it could also exile a creature with recursion, and there were plenty of those in standard at the time. It hasn't gained any points since it rotated out of standard. At number 6, it is Plax Caster Frogling. This is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with some pretty nice upside. First, it comes with Graft, which means it can move a counter to another creature when that creature enters the battlefield. Moving counters around like that can be quite nice, as sometimes you really need to augment your more evasive creatures, and it can do that. On top of that, it can also give a creature with plus and plus one counters on its shroud, which means that most removal won't be able to deal with it. It was played in the sideboard of Sultai Control X and Ravnica Block Constructed, where it could be brought in as a win condition, especially against other Control decks that played very few creatures and had a hard time dealing with the frog. At number 5, it is Frog Hemoth, the newest card on the list. This frog horror has a loaded text box, and there's some impressive text in there. 
He comes with Trample and Haste, which means it can attack and do damage. The turn it comes down in most cases, and that's especially important because when it does combat damage to a player, you get to exile cards from an opposing graveyard, and the Froghemoth will either grow or gain you life depending on what gets exiled. This makes him great at hating on the graveyard while also becoming an increasingly problematic threat. It's sort of a standard version of Scavenging Ooze. Froghemoth has already had success in Standard, showing up in the sideboard of Mono Green and Gruel Aggro decks as a card that can be brought in in various matchups, like against Control decks and any deck with graveyard stuff going on. It still has a very long time in Standard, and it's likely to gain significantly more points before it rotates. At number 4, it is Poliwog Symbiote. This frog pays you off for making use of Akoria's Mutate mechanic, since it reduces the cost of spells that have Mutate and lets you loot any time you do mutate. So it doesn't come as much of a surprise that all the decks it's been played in significantly feature the mutate mechanic. This included Umori Aggro decks in 2020, which ran several mutate creatures, and in 2021 it's been featured in Jeskai Mutate, a deck very much focused on mutating, especially with Vadrock Apex of Thunder. Since rotating out of standard, it hasn't gained any additional points. At number 3, it is Anurid Brushhopper. This is a 3-mana three 3-4 three, with upside, something that was really exceptional back in 2002. The upside lets you flicker the Brushhopper, which means you can use it to dodge removal. And, while the cost of doing that might sound a little steep, since you have to discard two cards, you can turn that into upside with cards that have Madness or Threshold, and both of those mechanics were featured in Brushhopper decks and Block and Standard. It also gained a single point in a pretty neat extended deck built around Balancing Act, where the Brushhopper's flicker effect comboed quite well with that sorcery, because since you could get rid of cards in your hand and also get rid of a creature temporarily all at once, you would make the opponent lose a ton of stuff, and then your Brushhopper would come back into play and was likely to dominate the board. It hasn't gained any points since 2007, though. Still, this list isn't exactly stacked, as evidenced by the fact that 6 points was enough to come in at number 3, so it's probably safe on this list for a while. At number 2, it is Rapid Hybridization. It has a very similar effect to Incongruity from earlier on the list. Instead of exiling the target, it destroys it, and it also costs 2 less mana. This is a pretty nice deal for blue, which often doesn't have ways to destroy creatures, and obviously it also comes with the additional upside of being something that you can use on your own creature in some situations, like if your creature was going to die anyway and you really need a 3-3 body. It gained all of its points in standard devotion to blue decks. Those decks were of course mono blue, and didn't have a whole lot of cards that could actually answer big threats, so hybridization was even played in the main deck of most versions of the deck because they needed something. It doesn't have any points since rotating out of standard. At number one, probably not surprising anybody, it's Frogmite. This artifact frog is one of the game's most powerful mechanics, affinity for artifacts. It was played in decks that could play a ton of artifacts on turn zero, including artifact lands, so the Frogmite was a zero mana 2-2 that you could play on turn one way too often. It's gained points in Affinity decks in Block, Standard, Extended, Modern, Legacy, and Popper. It's still actively gaining points in Popper too, so it's very likely to continue to increase its score going forward. It will be interesting to see if any new frogs, like Grawlnock, can surpass Frogmite in the future. Well, those are the 10 frogs that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. If you want to own any of these frogs, you can find a direct link for each of them in the description that will take you to the Card Kingdom store. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on past MTG Top 10s, including more on creature types, you should see some playlists on your screen shortly. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, you can do that on Patreon. Thanks for watching.